Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm continuing my conversation with Rishabh and we talk about his experience of studying robotics at UCLA. We go over how he prepared for his master's application, his experience of studying in the US compared to India, and we also talk about job hunting and placements. I'll include all of the timings in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. So now let's talk about what was your next plan. Most people when they are at the last year of their undergrad, they're either deciding do they want to pursue further education or do they want to go for placements? Where were you? Well, I was kind of in the middle. Beginning of uh, my final year, I was thinking about focusing on placements, but like within a week or so, I thought, you know, I want to do something more. Actually, that was a pretty late decision for me. Uh, I, I'd say I only gave myself like two months to prepare for GI, which is long, but it's not long enough for something like this. You still want to be mentally prepared for all, of, all that's coming. But yeah, I had two months to prepare for GI. I think it went well. I'm yeah, sure. it went well. You're definitely here. With that, let's shift the focus of the conversation to UCLA. Let's start with how you went about preparing. I know you mentioned that you prepared for two months. What else went into this preparation for coming to the US for a master's? Um, so yeah, the first thing, I think like there were several steps that I had to go through. Uh, it was, I wouldn't say it was planned, but I just, I watched some videos on YouTube. I uh, read some pamphlets from different universities. There were workshops held at the U.S. Embassy in the in, in Kolkata where I live. Uh, I read through those pamphlets. I learned about the universities and figured out okay, these are the universities I want to target. And based on those universities, I figured out okay, this is a score I might want to get, and this was my target. And then I prepared accordingly because I only again I only had two months, and so time management was a big deal. So I had to figure out okay, this is the score I want to hit. How much time do I want to devote to doing this kind of problems? And I was also uh, doing this course from Magush. Uh, I know people who, who are going to be preparing for GIE have surely heard of Magush. So you decided to go for UCLA. Can you tell us about the program at UCLA? Mechanical engineering, robotics, and kind of what combination existed? Right. Um, so at UCLA, robotics is part of a larger sub uh, field in mechanical engineering called DROM, uh, Design Robotics and Manufacturing. I guess they grouped it because they're kind of similar subjects, but my focus was entirely on robotics. I did some other courses from other branches uh, that, that were based, more based on perception and controls. So the program was like you have to, for masters it's pretty much whatever you choose to do, it's okay. Um, so I chose all of the robotics courses I could find in mechanical engineering um, and they were pretty helpful in developing the skills that I have now. Uh, and apart from that, I did do one design course, but that was mostly because I was interested in learning about it, which was compliant mechan mechanisms design. So I was just curious about it, so I took it. It was fun. But yeah, that was pretty much the program. Like, you can choose what courses you want to do, uh, if it's masters that you're aiming for. But if you're going for a PhD, you'll have to go through, like, certain specific courses uh, to be able to, you know, get your PhD. And then, how was it different from studying in India at IBU? So the one thing I noticed was the abundance of resources. <laughs> um, and I don't just mean, you know, material resources. I also mean professor's time. Like, in India, I didn't get that much access to professors. I mean, I did try, but I didn't get that much access here. They were pretty much always available. Uh, so that was very helpful. Speaking of material resources, uh, they had a whole 3D printing lab, which we didn't have in IIT Beiju. I guess we do now, but we did back when I was an undergrad there. That was very helpful for several projects that I did. Can you tell us about some of the projects that you got a chance to do? Um, so one of the projects was actually just straight up designing a robot, like just making a robot. We were given the motors, the servo motors that would go in the joints, and we had to design the robot ourselves. We had to write planning code for it and basically make the whole robot move uh, through, a, through a predefined path, of course, but you know, uh, basically that. So, 3D printing lab, it was pretty helpful in creating, in, in 3D printing the links for the robot. I think I spent hours with uh, one of my teammates figuring out how to do IK and cinematics for the robot, which I, I, at the beginning I thought, okay, this would be simple, but no, it wasn't simple. I had to spend like nights <laughs> solving that problem. But yeah, it, it was pretty fun. Uh, so that was one project. 
Uh, another project that I did was I was in the compliant mechanism design. Uh, that project was pretty amazing. Uh, we had to design uh, a compliant mechanism for stabilizing a printer head that can have five axes of freedom. Uh, basically, we had to stabilize it through these compliant mechanisms on all five axes. Like you have to study, uh, you have to study and design these compliant mechanisms to first of all be compliant, and second of all, all also be able to take up all, all the forces that might be coming your way. So that was pretty fun. Like uh, I remember on the last day before our final project submission, we were uh, spending time on ANSYS, just analyzing the part, just figuring out, okay, this doesn't work, this works, uh, let's change this. Uh, we spent the whole day just doing that. Nice. It sounds very exciting. I'm glad you had that experience and access to those resources. Now, also, let's talk about the placements. So back in India, I know most of our universities have a placement set. How is it in UCLA? So one thing I want to tell everybody is that when you're doing your master's, placements are not the same as in undergrad. Basically, they expect you to be more mature and more knowledgeable about these things, so they don't help you out that much. But luckily, UCLA still had a, a graduate career center, specifically you know, catering to graduates. That was separate from their career center, which actually specifically catered to the undergrads. In India, there's a dedicated place, placement cell in these in, in our institutes who uh, dedicate a lot of their time to uh, finding companies, reaching out to companies uh, to, to get placement, to get them to come to these institutes and interview students, right? Here it's different. You, you have to be uh, the one who's reaching out to these companies. You know, go on LinkedIn, go on their websites, go on Indeed, Glassdoor, research these companies out, see if they are a good fit, reach out to their uh, recruiters. Uh, I know many of them don't respond back, <laughs> but you have to do this. Like this is part of part of your experience as a graduate student. So you just have to do this. There's, there's no other way. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty different. Like point is that you have to be your own uh, salesman here, uh, rather than back in India where somebody else is, you know, uh, shilling for you. <laughs> yeah, and you were only responsible for the interview part. So let me also ask you this: uh, What advice or tips would you give to someone who's, you know, doing masters in the US and preparing for this? whole job hunting. One thing I want to tell you is don't lose hope. Yes. Uh, it is difficult. Of course it is difficult. Why wouldn't it be? You're from a different country and proving that you are better than somebody who's already who's already a US citizen is a very difficult task. So don't lose hope. Keep trying. As I said, reach out to recruiters, reach out to these companies by yourself. Try to put yourself out there and something will come up. <laughs> yeah. One thing is like don't be afraid to work hard for what it is you want to do, but try to work smartly because you only have 24 hours in a day and a lot of that time, you know, you need to sleep, you need to eat, other things, and you only have so much time to do whatever it is you need to do. So you need to be able to manage your time and work smartly, devote a lot of your time on things that you need to improve uh, rather than things that you already know you're good at. And another thing is when you're starting out as a freshman, uh, it's okay to not have a plan at that time. Like it's okay to not have a plan about what you want to do after you graduate. Like that's it, that's still like four years away, so it's okay not to have a plan then. But you should have a plan before your final year uh, final year begins, which is a mistake I have made. But I don't want anybody else to make that mistake. Make a plan before your final year begins and try to follow it. Yeah. yeah, that's really great advice. Yeah, and you start kind of explore more and by the time you get to your third year kind of create a plan that you can execute in the fourth year right yeah. yeah well thank you so much for coming and talking about your experiences if you have more questions use the comment section below and i'll try my best to get some answers and thank you so much for watching before you go make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and see you next time